It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Jewelry isn't a gift you give just once. It's a way to remind your loved one of a beautiful moment every time they see it. Blue Nile can help you find the gift that says how you feel and says it beautifully with expert guidance and a wide assortment of jewelry of the highest quality at the best price. Go to BlueNile.com and experience the convenience of shopping Blue Nile, the original online jeweler since 1999. That's BlueNile.com to find the perfect jewelry gift for any occasion. BlueNile.com. Hello and welcome to the 1865 Match Report. As we look back on Forrest's 3-2 defeat at home to Chelsea, it was all going so well up until about five past seven on Saturday night. Forrest 2-1 ahead with 10 minutes remaining. But again, old habits came back to bite them hard. Chelsea scored twice within a matter of minutes. Forrest only needed a point to absolutely guarantee Premier League survival. They couldn't quite do it. Chelsea came back and won 3-2. And it does go into the final game week of the Premier League season, albeit Forest should be OK. All fingers crossed. We've been here before. They should be safe, barring a ridiculous goal swing next week between them and Luton. It's Stephen here and I've got Baz with me to look back over the game. First of all, Baz, will have a look at the side that Nuno picked for this match. He went back to the back three and a 3-4-3 three, three formation to be exact. So we had Sells in goal. The back three was Bolly, Murillo and Nia Carte. Montiel, Yates, Danilo and Ina were across the middle. And then a front three of Morgan Gibbs, White, Chris Wood and Callum Hudson-Odoi making his 100th Premier League appearance against his former club as well. I could understand... Nuno's reasoning for going back to the back three it was very effective against Man City would you agree that that was the right move when you when you saw that team announced yeah um so one of the things you have to note about Chelsea is they're very 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 fast on the break um Modric and Cole Palmer and whatever they're they're and Jackson they're quick players and we're not slow at the back but you don't want to play a high lineup up against that so it made perfect sense my one worry was playing a front three with Gibbs White up there and Wood meant that maybe we would get Gibbs White sort of knocked out of the game like happened at the start of the season with under Steve Cooper but that didn't really happen I noticed Wood and Gibbs White were swapping position while hudson Adoy stayed on the left Gibbs White quite often played down the centre with Wood peeling off to the to the wing. So it didn't quite happen as it did at the start of the season. But that was my one worry about the, the formation. And before the game, we knew that Forrest were as good as safe, thanks to results in the 3pm kickoffs. So Luton's defeat at West Ham and Burnley's defeat at Spurs, meaning that barring a massive goal swing of 12, Forrest will be safe and playing in the Premier League again next season. And as a result, Baz, it was a real party atmosphere at the city ground. It was raucous. Everybody was up for it. And it was great to see because we haven't heard noise to that kind of level as much this season as we did last. And it was really good to be part of. Yeah, I mean, I managed to get to the ground a bit earlier than I normally do. And I didn't get into the fan zone. There was a massive queue, but you could just hear the the wacka wacka singing. And every time, like, when the, when um, when Luton conceded or uh, the full-time whistles went in the other games, you just heard this massive cheer go up all around the city ground. It was, it was like, it was, a, it felt like a proper party atmosphere for the first time 
maybe this entire season. So we had Waka Waka playing over the tunnel before kickoff when yep. the Premier League anthem started, though that got a bit of a booing, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, but again, yeah. And and there was the the banner in the the Trent end as well, which was um, if you try and put us down, then we show you who we are, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, which... So that little bit of defiance is still there. The place was very much up for it, and Forrest got off to a quick start through Ina. He pinged a ball forward for Wood to chase onto. He got to it first, but his lobbed effort was easily caught by Petrovic in the Chelsea goal. <laughs> However, it was Chelsea who got that first goal, and it came seven minutes in. And it's all really Cole Palmer's work here. He plays a fantastic through ball that takes a couple of Forest defenders out. Mudrick runs onto that through ball and finishes past cells into the far corner. In all fairness, it was a really well-worked goal from Chelsea. And Cole Palmer, who you wanted to mention, really impressed you on the day. Yeah, I thought, I think, um, for, for, first of all, I think it was probably Chelsea's first spell. It's like seven minutes into the game, their first spell of any sort of possession whatsoever. It was all us up till then. But I thought Cole Palmer's the best player I've seen this season. Uh, he was just on a different level, controlled the game. He could spot stuff that no one else could see, and he just had so much time. It was like I said just before; it was like watching the Matrix when he's <laughs> everyone else is in like bullet time in slow motion, and he was just looking round and just taking his time to pick out the perfect pass. And that that goal was a perfect example of it. He just slid this perfectly weighted through ball through our defence, and once that pass had gone through, no one had a chance. Forrest had started the game well, though, and were forcing Chelsea into... They were forcing Chelsea back and forcing them to defend, actually. And it and it was, like you say, Chelsea's first real attack at the Forrest goal that led to them scoring. But it wasn't too long until Forrest found an equaliser. It came from a free kick. Murillo had carried the ball forward. He was tripped by Badi Ashile. And Morgan Gibbs White floats this free kick into the back stick. Willie Bolly's there unmarked, and his header beats the keeper. I think it takes a nick. It might have been off Conor Gallagher on the way through, mm. but Forrest were on terms and deservedly so, Baz. Yeah. Um, when it went in, uh, so first of all, actually, just a quick word from Murillo. It was one of his little runs that he's not really done that much recently. Um, but yeah, bombing up the field. Uh, outpacing their midfield and Badashile had to had to take him down. They just tripped him, sort of nicked him. Um, I really, really wanted Murillo to score. I was like, Yates scored <laughs> last week, so it's time for Murillo to get one of them. Um, but yeah, Gibbs White, really nice floated free kick in. When Bolly got to it and it went in, I was like, that's a really good goal. Uh, a little bit, not not as like elegant as Chelsea's goal, but that was a very very good goal. And then the thing comes up on the on the scoreboard saying VAR check possible offside. Yeah, and I mean I wasn't in the best position for it because I'm near the halfway line, but I didn't see what what the possible offside was, and you could just sense this injustice and anger <laughs> well across the ground. And, Here and, we um, go again. Yeah, yeah, but um, it stood. Having watched it back now. I think maybe it was offside, but but it stood. So there we go. Yep. And Forrest were level and we weren't complaining one bit. Another corner later on from Danilo was fumbled by Petrovic. It fell to Wood and his header, he could only steer over and and over the bar, which was perhaps a little indicator of things to come later in the game. Mm-hmm. But Chelsea again, again... We have to say, um, I think we're making this point every week is like, up till that miss against Spurs, he'd have scored that. He would have scored that. We're going to talk about the big chance that he has later on, but there's so much of his game that's been really good still. Like his hold up play and the way he he's bringing everybody else around him into the game. It's been, I mean, it's still fact, really when good. When he joined us, his hold up play was awful, mm. and he's got a lot better at it. Yeah, but it's um, like you say, it's just that the last couple of weeks the goals have dried up for him, and and it's it's a shame, but. By the same token, Forrest might not be in this position that they are now and safety without mm. his goals earlier in the season. So it's uh, 
it's been ups and downs, I think, for, for Wood a little bit, this campaign. But back to the game. And again, Cole Palmer was involved in another chance for Chelsea. A nice threaded ball through. Nicholas Jackson runs onto it and Sells has to make a big save. He looks really strong and confident in those one-on-one situations. You fancy him a lot of the time, don't you? And this yeah. was another one he made. Yeah, I think strong's the right word for it. He, he stood up well. He, he positioned himself well. He made himself big. He did everything right. And he's actually, without being flashy, he's turned out to be a really good keeper and quite a good signing. Yeah, yeah. I think five million, wasn't it? Which is, yeah. which is an absolute bargain already, it's looking like. Couple of other incidents in that first half. Uh, Hudson Odoi was bundled over just outside the box by Conor Gallagher. He wasn't clean through on goal because there was Kukurea nearby, but had he not been taken out, he'd have had an opportunity to shoot and potentially score. Gallagher was booked for that. I thought he was clean through, and um, yes, at the time I was I was proper swearing. But the, that opportunity went away from Forrest. And then Gibbs White again picked out Bolly from a free kick a couple of minutes later. But this time, Badi Ashile cleared it off the line. And then just before half time, Murillo plays this unbelievable pass mm-hmm. to Hudson Odoi like a golf chip. It was yeah. unbelievable. And uh, I, th- I think the whole ground was just I thought he just, at what they just, just seen. He'd just chosen to like hoof it into Rose Ed for no particular reason. And then suddenly you see, actually, he spotted Hudson Nadoy, and it's like, that was incredible. Fantastic play again from Murillo. Hudson Nadoy's shot was blocked, and then Wood's follow up was straight at Petrovic. I think he was on the wrong foot for him as mm. well. If that's on his left foot, you fancy him to make a better connection. So it was 1 1 at half time. And in the second half, Forrest shooting towards the Trent end. And again, the game seemed to pick up in a similar fashion. Forrest having more of the play and look, creating more of the opportunities. And it was some neat play between, between the Forrest players that led to the ball going to Ryan Yates. He's about 20 yards out from goal. He shoots low, left-footed, but it just clips the post and goes wide. It would have been satisfying to see that one nestle <laughs> in the bottom corner after his goal last week. But Forrest oh, again, so close. On, that, so on the, on the build-up for that as well, That was, I think that was the one where Ola Aina picks it up sort of just in their half, runs straight through them, and then we just work the ball around their defence. Uh, it comes to Montiel, who then plays it into, I think, Gibbs White, who plays it across to, to Yates. And it was a really, really nice bit of football. It and was, as yeah. well was was outstanding that game. Yeah, really good he was. And he was involved again in the big opportunity that fell Forrest's way. And I played the ball to Danilo initially. He His cross picks out Hudson Odoi at the far post. He then crosses it back in and it, it's met by Morgan Gibbs-White. He heads it against the post the ball then drops to Chris Wood, but three yards out, somehow manages to steer the ball over the bar. He should have scored that. And to repeat the line that we've said for the last couple of weeks, pre-Spurs, he'd have buried it. Yeah. I mean, for, for Gibbs White's header not to have gone in was was quite something as well. The way he threw himself at it, um, you think that, that would have been enough. And then when it comes out, I think... Having seen a replay of it, it looks like it's just a little bit behind Chris Wood. So he's kind of off balance trying to get under it to to get it to to push it on target, which is why it goes over. But yeah, um, same thing again. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, we would have buried that. The Radio Nottingham commentary of it is something else as well. The anguish in Brian Laws's voice <laughs> when he realizes what Chris Wood has done is worth listening to. Just one other thing about that that attempt though, as well, was um that was and we'll come back to this, I'm sure, but that was hudson Adoy. Instead of cutting in and trying to use his right, he just puts the cross in with his left, goes outside, comes back in, and then puts it in with his left, which is quite rare for him. Yeah, but it's good to see him trying to mix it up, and I think mm. it does have a, an effect on what comes later in the game. A couple of minutes after this, Chelsea up the other end, hit the post. It's a, a free kick from Cole Palmer swung in. Thiago Silva with a glancing header, Clips that far post and goes away to safety. 
Forest then make a couple of changes with about 20 minutes to go. Uh, Yates and Montiel come off for Alanga and Toffolo. And then it's shortly after that that Forrest scored a goal that puts them 2-1 ahead. And it's a it's a really well-worked move, isn't it, Baz? And it starts with Matt Sells and a great pass out to Aina on the right wing. Actually, just um, before that as well, I can't remember if it was before or after the substitutions, there was um, hudson Adoy's shot that hits the post. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yep, so that, that was him cutting back inside. Um, steadying himself sort of on the edge of the box. He does a lovely little pause. He like stops the ball, takes the defender out and then carries on and then hits it with his right and just hits the, um, is it the, is that the post? No, it's the bar that one. It's the bar, doesn't it? I think it takes it from my position. It looks like it takes a nick on the way through and it that right. loops it onto the crossbar. But then, yeah. So then the actual goal itself, as you say, started by cells, Works its way through a big chunk of the team. And then hudson Doy does the same again. He doesn't have to, um, to stop the ball this time, but he pretty much just places it uh, without hitting it so high and just places it beyond Petrovic uh, at the far post. And it's all his goals are pretty much identical, but but it was really, really well taken. And the few minutes after that goal... Plus the celebration for the goal itself, it was just brilliant. The mm. place just erupted, and and fans off their seats chanting and jumping around, and it had turned into a carnival atmosphere after the goal. Definitely, I mean, yeah, it was like, yeah, we only need a point. Here we are with three. <laughs> what 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 can you say? <laughs> what can go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> And it wasn't too long before Chelsea were level and a very similar goal, actually. Raheem Sterling, he'd come off the bench. He cuts in in the Forest penalty area and bends a shot past Sells into the far corner. Very similar to what hudson Adoy had just done. Could Forest have done better with this defensively or is it simply a case of just Sterling was too good? In the same way, as, like, you can't really fault Chelsea's defence too much for the hudson Adoy chances. You can't really fault our defence for the Raheem Sterling one. It was just it was just a brilliant bit of play. And despite Chelsea scoring, the atmosphere was still up and really, really positive because Forrest just needed a point to make absolutely certain of safety. However, two minutes later, Chelsea take the lead and it comes from... I think it was a Toffolo, gone, Toffolo had gone forward to join an attack, left loads of space down the left-hand side. I'm not just pinning this on Toffolo, it's, it's the whole team as well. But Reese James, down Chelsea's right, is in acres of space. He's picked out, he's got the opportunity to pull the ball back across. And Nicholas Jackson comes in and, and puts the header in from close range to give Chelsea the lead. I thought this was a frustrating goal to concede. It felt naive and it felt like a bit of a bit of a bad habit coming back in from Forest, where they've got themselves in front, they've got something from the game, and they allow it to slip yet again. Yeah. I, I, I have to say, Nicholas Jackson, I thought that's a superb goal from him because the way he positions himself to give himself the space to get the header. I mean, everyone's been banging on about Reese James's cross, which was very, very good. But it's Jackson's positioning. He he makes sure that Murillo has no chance of getting to the ball because of where he's put himself. So we have to say that's that's really, really good from Jackson. But to let it happen in the first place, because I said right at the start, Chelsea are very, very good on the counter attack. They're very, very fast, and that was a counter attacking goal where our defence was in disarray because we were, weren't were ready for them to come at us. And that's kind of the problem. It, it was naive, as you say. It was, yeah, we shouldn't have let them catch us on the counter like that. And a few minutes after the goal, Forrest make a couple more changes. hudson Adoy comes off for Dominguez and Nia Carte comes off for Taiwo Awanyi. 
But in those in those closing minutes, Forest couldn't really find much of a response. There were a few crosses and corners that went into the Chelsea box, but they were easily dealt with by them. There was a few frustrating moments as well. Was it Einar and Sterling had a bit of a coming together mm-hmm. and Sterling made the most of it and stayed down. So Chelsea at that point were trying to to see the game out and, and eat up the time. And I also say that um once um Toffolo had come on and Einer had swapped flanks. I thought he was much less effective. He looked a bit dodgy defensively and he didn't get the chance to go forward as much either. Yeah, and, and Toffolo did did struggle after he came on. Yeah. Not going to be too critical of him because he's been he's been very good this season and, and he doesn't let Forrest down. But there were yeah, a few moments yesterday, even before the the Chelsea goals, where he was found wanting a little bit and Chelsea had a lot of joy down that. Down mm. there, right, Forrest left all of a sudden, and eventually that's where the winning goal comes from. So 3-2, it finished, and overall, it was an enjoyable game, actually, looking looking back over the whole spectacle. And if you were neutral, it would have been even more enjoyable. And from Forrest's point of view, it's just frustrating again that another lead has been lost, and They've lost another game this season by a 3 2 scoreline. <laughs> yeah. Although, yeah, I don't feel like the other 3 2s I felt quite down about. Whereas this one, I thought, actually, I looked at the stats afterwards and I think we had 20 chances to their 12. Um, I think overall, we looked a decent side. It's just that little bit of naivety that we just need to stamp out. But Earlier in the season, we didn't look great going forwards and we were incredibly naive and made mistakes defensively constantly. Whereas this time, I thought this was a much, much more positive and overall sort of competent performance from us. The 1865 Match Report. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Like all of our podcasts this season, this episode of 1865, the Nottingham Forest podcast, is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Make Green King your go-to destination for the season's final stretch. But why? Well, for one, you can wash every televised Forest game down with delicious food and refreshing beverages. And with 900 sports pubs dotted around the UK, chances are you're within walking distance of your local Green King. Let's be honest, watching football is way better with friends and family. So get the squad together for every televised Premier League fixture in an atmosphere worth sharing. That includes huge title showdowns, huge. The race for European qualification and nail-biting relegation six-pointers, unfortunately involving our very own Nottingham Forest. Don't forget to download the Green King Sport app to enjoy exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there's a game on. Now it's back to your podcast. You're listening to 1865, the Nottingham Forest podcast. Welcome back to this match report. So we were talking, Baz, about the atmosphere at the city ground during this Chelsea game. It was, for the most part, a bouncing atmosphere. Everybody was up for it, enjoying the game, enjoying the evening. One thing I wanted to pick up on as well was off the back of the stories this week around Forest's stadium impasse and the potential that Toten could be an option should the club move in the future. The fans made their feelings known about this <laughs> yes. with chance of stand up for the city ground and anti Toten chanting, <laughs> which you probably can't repeat on here, but um, no, the, the fans made it very clear their feelings on the, on the stadium situation. Just on, on top of that as well. I didn't think so. Mr. Maranakis sits pretty much directly opposite me and I didn't notice him, but he apparently was there in the stadium. Uh, so he would have heard all that. So yeah. uh, it'd be quite interesting to see what his thoughts were on it. 
Yeah, a penny for his thoughts indeed. Let's talk then about how Forrest managed the game because I saw Nuno come in for a bit of stick after the result and saying that he basically allowed the game to to drift away from Forrest in that second half and once they'd gone 2-1 up. Do you think there's questions over his game management and the way he reacts to things that happen in games, some of his substitutions and and perhaps even tactical switches as well? I think um I think that he's he's a very, very tactically astute manager. But, and this is always the case with every manager, there's always going to be baffling substitutions and baffling decisions made because no, not least they've got access to data that we don't have. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, like um, someone said that um, Hudson Adoy, when he was doing his lap of honour afterwards, was was hobbling. So basically that's why he came off. was He wasn't able to carry on. But I do think, yeah, there was that, once we were two one up, and we know Chelsea are good on the break, yeah, you have to to some extent shut up shop a little bit. Not completely because you don't want to invite pressure on them on yourself. But I thought we were we were a little bit open, a little bit too open and too gung ho going forwards. Um, once we were two one up, and maybe that's as well just down to the atmosphere as well. The players would have felt it. It's like this is amazing. Let's uh, we're, we're safe. Let's go for it. And and I think maybe it came back to bite us. Would Forrest have played like that, do you think, had Luton beaten West Ham and there was perhaps a bit more riding on this game? Would Forrest have been a bit more conservative in their approach, perhaps, especially if they'd gone how they did, 2-1 up? So I think part of the, like the big thing that Nuno has changed over Steve Cooper is that we go for it right from the off. Um, and we are much better going forwards than we were earlier in the season. So I don't think he would have wanted to compromise that in any way. But that whole thing of um and yeah, and again, if you if you do just shut up shop and sit deep, you're going to invite pressure on. And as we said, Cole Palmer can see a pass that'll cut through a defense no matter what. So you don't want to be just sat on, on the edge of your D um without possession. But I think um, if yeah, if if there was more riding on the game, maybe we would have just been a little bit more conservative. Maybe corner flagged it a bit more rather than just flying the crosses in or something. And hopefully, it's not going to cost us. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think yeah, we were probably were a little bit too gung ho. And after the the. Final set of substitutions, we were pretty much shapeless. I was trying to figure out what sort of shape we were playing while watching this, and I, I couldn't see it. Yeah, the other thing to mention is, is substitutions and the difference between the two benches. Somebody said it in our WhatsApp group after the game that Forrest's subs made them worse, Chelsea's subs made them better. And it's hard to argue with that. Yeah, absolutely. But again... It's that, it's that difference in quality. You look at Chelsea's bench compared to ours and the options they're able to bring on. That's perhaps how it should be because they, they just have so much more depth. Yeah, I mean, the interesting one, as we've already mentioned about Toffolo and Ina, is I'm not the biggest fan of Montiel and I don't think he actually had a great game. But when he went off, that's probably what changed the game more than anything. So Ina struggled on when he was playing on the right hand side. And yeah, as we've said, Toff sort of made a few not mistakes, but left us open a little bit. And that's kind of what weakened us. And that that yeah, that 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 whereas they could bring Reese James on, who is a player I really like, and I think he's a fantastic uh, right back. The other thing actually that did change um in towards maybe just before we went um two one up was um Cucurella was playing as like one of those inverted fullbacks. So Chelsea were basically playing a back three in possession with Cucurella bolstering the midfield. And I noticed it a lot during the first half was he was getting himself to be completely unmarked because we didn't have anyone to pick him up. But in the second half they stopped doing that and they basically played a flat back four. And and then especially when Reese James came on that then gave them 
attacks down the down the wide areas that they didn't have in the first half and that probably made a difference as well so us weakening our fullback position and them strengthening their their wide attacks is is what turned the game on the subject of individual performances i thought ryan yates had a good game until he was taken off he he was very effective in the middle how he was winning the ball back and and just doing the things he's really good at and even having a few pops at goal he had one in the first half which was more awkward and uh, I think it was a ball drop to him, sort of a volley that went over the bar. But then the one he almost scored within the second half, it was um, it was almost like the goal last week at Sheffield United just gave him the confidence to have a go. And he was so close again to scoring. But I thought he had a good game, one of his better performances this season. Definitely. And the, the key thing, and the thing with Yates is um, he has this habit of putting his hands on the opposition players back and basically shoving them or giving them the opportunity to get shoved over and giving away stupid free kicks. And I think he only did that twice that I noticed in in that game. So that's a definite improvement on his part as well. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So the result means that Forest are three points outside the relegation zone, three points ahead of Luton. Luton's goal difference is minus 31. Forest's is minus 19. Luton have scored more goals this season. So it's a 12-goal swing that needs to happen next weekend. So Luton beating Fulham 6-0 and Forrest losing 6-0 at Burnley, basically. Mm-hmm. If that happens, then Forrest are down. But surely, Baz, that's not going to happen. And we are OK and we are safe for another season. Lightning I can't can... strike twice, surely. <laughs> I, can, I can actually just about see... Luton getting six against Fulham, even though Man City couldn't. I could I could quite see that Luton might be able to do that, but I can't see Burnley getting six against us. Um they they looked I mean Luton looked pretty broken from what I could see of uh, the of from yesterday, but they're also the sort of team that are likely to be able to pick themselves up, whereas I'm not entirely sure Burnley can. Uh I could see us not winning at Burnley because Burnley have got a point to prove, but not by six goals. Having said that, we were talking beforehand about Stoke um, under Sabri. Um, there was Yeovil uh, in the playoffs. In fact, all our playoff games are Blackpool won, the Sheffield United won, yep. <laughs> where, we, where we thought, yeah, this, we're as good as through. So I'm not going to count any chickens, but you'd have to hope that, <laughs> that the 12, 12 goal swing would be enough. Yeah, surely it's got to be. So we will have our match report for you after the Burnley game next week. But before then, of course, we will have our Friday Five. Do make sure that you are subscribed so that you can keep up to date with all of our latest content. And join us for Friday Five and our match report after Burnley. Thank you, Baz. And thank you, listener, for joining us. We're going to leave it there. Until next time, thanks for listening and goodbye. Podcast Network. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every home run, every hit, every inning, every play. From the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. See for yourself when you sign up today and get $150 in bonus bets when you bet just $5. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. 21 plus only must be physically located in Virginia. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Terms and conditions apply.